Good morning, George. It's good to be here with you this morning, celebrating the resurrection, the death, and resurrection of beloved Savior and King, Jesus Christ. Before to, to prepare this lesson, my brother Derek invited me in advance. That's good. That's good for me because it gave me time to be prepping, to be thinking, to be writing down. And it myself, for me to prepare a lesson, and the way is I'm thinking. I'm thinking what I'm going to preach this time. So all that, that thoughts that come to my mind, I write it down. I write something. Oh, yes. And then I'm prepping, I'm prepping my lesson. If you see my notes, sometimes I have time to prepare in, in an orderly way my lesson, but sometimes not. For example, this time, not too much time to prepare in my, in my paper the same lesson that I wrote in the, in the computer. But for you, maybe you read it right here, you're not going to understand it because it's a kind of mess. But I know, I know, I understand it perfectly. It's like the same, like the doctor, when they write it down, they, they themselves, they understand what they wrote. But somebody else is very hard. And so I was thinking, what to preach? What to preach? So I thought, I remember a brother, brother uh, Rex in one lesson, he said, oh, my favorite book is the book of Ecclesiastes. And I thought, oh, my favorite book is the book of John. So I'm going to prepare a lesson from the book of John. But then at the same time, I said, oh, maybe from another book, not this time about John. And, not, and so I, I, I talked to my son, Carlos. And Brother Derry, Carlos, Brother Derry invited me to preach. And I don't know yet how, what to preach. And my, my son told me that about the the mind about the power or control of the mind. I thought about the control of the mind. So maybe the name for this lesson, it could be this one, self-control, self-control. So when that idea came to my mind, immediately I wrote it down, self-control. So I thought I got the title of my lesson. That's good, that's the first step. The title of my lesson is it shall be self-control. And I remember that in Galatians chapter 5, thanks, Brother Alex, for the scripture reading, it said about the self-control. So self-control, brothers and sisters, is one of the fruit of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Self-control. When I was a child, I remember that I heard a, a, a radio novel in Honduras, and that radio novel was from Mexico. And the name of this radio novel is Calimán. It, it doesn't exist anymore. But this man, he was like um, a, a man that was in different places, uh, in adventures, in punishing the bad people, and making to try justice against the, the innocent people. And one of, 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 of his thoughts that he mentioned most of the time was, who controls the mind, controls everything. And probably that's right. If we have self-control over our mind, we are going to be able to control other things. Because self-control, self-control is a discipline that God grows in us. Nobody is born with self-control. Nobody, no one. The Lord God is giving to us. This is a blessing from God. And this is a fruit of the Holy Ghost of God giving to us. It's not a gift. It's a fruit. The gift are, were given for some Christians in the first century. That's the difference between the, uh, the gifts and the fruit. 
But every single Christian, the, the Holy Ghost is giving to every single Christian the gift of the Holy Ghost to every one of us. So no excuse to say, oh, I don't have patience. Oh, oh I, 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 I cannot have self-control. That's not true because God is giving to us the self-control. It's a fruit for every single Christian. It's a discipline that God grows in us when we, it's conditionally, when we continually choose to die to all flesh and live in God. It's conditional. The Lord is saying, or the Holy Ghost is saying, this is for you. But the condition is, you must to die on your flesh. No more satisfaction for the flesh. That's it. Or to give another definition about the self-control, a very short definition is simply this. To think before to act. Or not. But the problem is that we act and then we think. And then we are saying, sorry, sorry, sorry. And every one of us, are, we are mistaken in this. We don't think. We act. And then, oh, I mess it up. I'm sorry. But the Lord God is requiring from us to have self-control because he's giving to us self-control. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter, chapter 5, verse 22 and verse 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. Nigh fruit of the Holy Spirit for us. And one of those nice fruit is self-control. This is the one that we shall be talking this morning about the self-control. And then the Apostle Paul adds, against such things, there is no law. There is condemnation when there is law. When there is no law, there is no condemnation. Why the police officer give to us or stop to us to give us a ticket? Depends. It could be for we exceed the speed limit. Oh, because we are suspicious. That means that we are breaking the law. But if there is no law, for example, if we, do, we do don't have a, a authority, who is going to give me a ticket? But, but this work will be completely a mess. It's already a mess, but it, it, it will be worse. Worst. So that's, that's, that's why the Apostle Paul is saying against such things, there is no law. There is no condemnation. Who is going to accuse you? If we are loving one another, who is going to be able to accuse us? But the accuser, the devil, is accusing us and brothers and sisters, unfortunately, Sometimes he's right. When he's accusing us, sometimes, I say sometimes because not, because not all the time. Because if we are not loving one another and he is constantly accusing before God to us and we are not loving one another, is he right or is he wrong? Right. Unfortunately, he's right. So let's keep obeying to our Lord God and 
no matter if the devil continue, continue accusing us, it's going to be accusation. We're going to be studying this morning about two factors that contribute to a loss of self-control. There are many things that contribute to loss self-control, but we don't have too much time. In this lesson, we're going to be talking. I, I choose only two because I thought these probably are very strong a factor that contributes to lose a self-control. Number one, hunger. People, when is hungry, become angry. <laughs> Very angry. I want the food and right now, right away. Hurry up. And then when the food gets warm, I can eat this food very fast. I'm very hungry because it's too hot. And we start cursing, we start yelling, and making a mess, and, and saying bad words. I don't know. That's, that's the big problem. Probably, probably we're going to be hungry in a couple of more minutes. It's going to be get into almost to lunch time and you're going to be hungry probably you're going to be saying brother carlos a short the lesson because <laughs> we didn't eat breakfast <laughs> we're going to be hungry very soon and the other is about anger we're reading the, the bible many examples of many people including jesus christ right he became angry but it's the right reason. And the problem is not get angry. The problem is when we don't have control over or, or anger. That's the problem. When we start cursing, uh, saying bad words, and most of the time that happens. Accusing, we see that one, we watch this one in the movies. Uh, on the street, in conversations, people when people is arguing, uh, for uh, arguing for their rights, and, and that's good to be arguing for their rights, fighting for their rights. That's good. But the problem is, if we are fighting or discussing about our rights, and we start cursing and we start, uh, we are angry, became angry, and we are uh, saying bad words. That's the problem. So these two factors are very important. So let's start with this one. This is a good example. They lost their self-control. The congregation lost their self-control. The congregation of Israel in the wilderness. 400 years in captivity in Egypt, in Egypt. Now they are free, walking to the promised land. And they could get in a straight way to the promised land. But the Lord took them 40 years in the wilderness, going around, testing them. And the Lord knew or he knows everything. Or oh, if we get astray, there is a, a people over there, enemies, people that doesn't know God, but doesn't know me, and they're gonna be fighting against my people, and they're gonna be, my people is gonna be scared. They're gonna, they're gonna try to come back to Egypt. But that's not good. Go that way. It's better to go around, it's gonna take longer, but it's gonna be a safe, I'm going to be taking care of that. That was the Lord God said. I'm going to be like, we have now in, in our cell phone, the GPS. We use the GPS and we are trusting in the GPS. Sometimes, by the way, the GPS confuses us. 
Because when we get to the, to the place, we said, oh, I could be straighter than the GPS. It took me around. But we are trusting in the G GPS. Yes or not? Yeah, we trust in the GPS. God was like a GPS for them, taking them to the right direction. It's the difference that the Lord God is right. GPS, the cell phone is not right sometimes. So that's the difference. But the core congregation of the sons of Israel grumbled or complained against Moses, against the prophet of God, and Aaron, the future priest of God, in the wilderness, and the sons of Israel said to them, Good that we had died by the Lord's hand in the land of Egypt when we sat by the pots of meat. Food. We're talking about food. The complaining is about food. When we ate bread to the full. We are hungry, we began to imagine good food and delicious food. Oh, and we start tasting the food in our mouth. Oh, I'm very hungry. I wish to eat right now. I wish to have the same food that we were eating in Egypt to the full to get satisfied. What you have now. Is the accusation. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill the whole assembly with what? Hunger. With hunger, they lost self control because they were hungry. The leaders of the congregation of the assembly. Present before the prophet of God and the priest of God, accusing them. This is a plan. You already planned this one to brought the whole people, to brought our families, or women, or children, or friends to die right here in this wilderness. It was a horrible, brothers and sisters, accusation against the people of men. Because, what's the reason? Because they were hungry, not enough food, the supplies uh, they carry with them from Egypt began to run out. And they had to be satisfied in the wilderness that we don't have anymore. Uh, they, did, they did not live through weeks and weeks of famine. Nor dear did they see their family and friends die of malnutrition? And in the chapter 15, this happened in the, this complaining happened in the chapter 16. But in the chapter 15, they were singing to God, glorifying to God because they were free. He glorified God. God is the highest one. He's almighty. But one chapter later, they move from the singing to complaining very quickly. Because they lost their self-control. They forgot immediately all the blessing of God. They forgot the miracle that the Lord divide the Red Sea in two parts. They forgot that the Lord killed all the Egyptians. They forgot that. Now they are complaining. This is, this is so sad. We have to learn to have self-control. That's normal that we feel to feel hungry. It's part of our flesh. But it's going to be the time when we're going to get satisfied. For example, I know that that happened probably in your life. You are doing something very busy, extremely busy. 
The food is ready. What, 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 what do we say sometimes? I'll get over there in a minute because I need to finish this. This is so important. It can wait. Happened to me sometimes. I'm, I'm the work, I'm using some um, kind of mold to patch the, the walls, and I have to prepare this dust with water, mix it up, and this dries very quick, very fast. And the amount that I prepare, I have to use it. Because if not, I'm going to waste time, money, material, everything. I have to do it. But the food is already waiting for me. And I am very hungry. Oh, what do I do? Throw away the material or, or go to it. Or wait a little bit more. Finish this one. And then I have time to go to it. Sacrifices. Like I said before, you're going to be hungry very soon. Let's do this sacrifice. Just wait. Just wait, the Lord. The Lord shall provide. The Lord is, is with us. The Lord is holding us. But they start to complaining and accusing to the men of God. And they were ready to kill the men of God to stomp them. We're going to kill you. We're going to kill you. We're, gonna, we're not going to allow that our children or wives. Eh, it died right here in this wilderness. We are going to kill you. This is dissolution. You are guilty of this. The Lord Jesus was a huge of glutton and drunkard. You only want to be eating and eating and eating with sinners. The Lord Jesus said, I don't understand this generation. I, I try to associate with people to spread the message of my father, and they are accusing me. He was the Lord Jesus a drunkard? No. He was a glutton? No. The Lord Jesus is the best example of self control. Jesus commands us to be self controlled. Because he is our best example. Jesus answered then to the multitude. One day before, he fed a multitude of 5,000 men besides women and children. And the next day, we're going to read what happened to this multitude. Jesus answered then to the multitude and said, Truly, truly, I say to you, you seek me, not because you saw signs. You are seeking me now, not because you believe in my miracles. You are seeking me, not because you believe that I am the Messiah. But because you ate. It's about food. You ate of the loaves and were filled. You were satisfied. Do not work for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you. For on King, the Father, God has said, he see or John chapter 6 verse 26 and verse 27 the multitude next day seeking again the Lord for food we are hungry again we want food again let me tell you something that happened right here years ago almost about 20 years ago right here I was attending here and I brought a, a, a friend I sent to this service and when we finished the service 
they told me when we were in the parking lot, they told me, uh, I asked them, you like, you like the service, the worship service to the Lord? And they said, but there is one problem. I thought, what is the problem? And then one of them told me, because we are hungry, and this congregation is not providing food. <laughs> This congregation is not giving food. And I, I respond, I respond, King, that's not a problem. That's not a problem. Because the congregation is not a restaurant. <laughs> but we were gonna, I'm gonna invite you now, we're gonna go out and we're gonna eat together. That's not a problem. So, I understand that, I understood that he was, they were waiting. After the service. Now, people, unfortunately, people sometimes, no, not all the people, I'm not saying all the people. Okay. Myself, maybe I, I, I also I had that kind of thought before, before to know the Lord, I was attending to the services, trying to find something, you know, to get something. And sometimes that's, that's normal because the Lord knows about that. But that was wrong. In this case right here, the Lord understood that they were uh, looking for him again because he, they were hungry again. They wanted food again. And the Lord rebuked them. No. Stop. Believe. Believe that I am the Messiah. Believe in my sign. Uh, believe in, the, in, the, in my teaching, in the words that you are hearing. Work. Uh, for the food which do not work for the food that perishes, work for the other food, the spiritual food. It's a rebuking day. Now we're going to see the Lord Jesus is going to be tempted. After that, he identified with the sinner in his baptism. Now the Lord Jesus is going to identify with them again. But now in a severe temptation. The Bible says that then, then Jesus was led up by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted. Remember, the congregation, they were complaining and they lost their self-control in the, in, in the wilderness. But in the same place, in the wilderness, Jesus was Successful. In the same place. It's a big contrast. He was led by the Holy Spirit to be tempted by the devil. And after he got faster 40 days and 40 nights, he then became hungry. Stolen again, about food. But we see that Jesus is a great example for us. For us, He wasn't led by the Holy Spirit uh, to the wilderness to grow. To grow spiritually. No. He was led by the Holy Spirit to the wilderness to identify with us in the flesh. Remember, Jesus Christ became flesh to identify with sinners again at the same way that sinners need to repent need to be baptized for the forgiveness of sin the lord jesus now is identifying with them that also the flesh the human being is able to have self-control including even when we are hungry. 40 days, also Moses eh, was fasting in the mountain, the mountain, Sinai mountain, 40 days and 40 nights. Also the prophet Elijah, 40 days and 40 nights. As the Bible says that now the Lord Jesus is, is extremely hungry. He was 
starving. He was dying. And the panther appeared. The panther is tempting every one of us. But the panther, this temptation to Jesus was deeper than our own, our own temptation because the devil spoke to him directly. In his bautism, in the Jordan, the Lord Jesus heard the voice of the Father. This is my beloved son. Now he's hearing the voice of the devil. If you are talking directly with him, the devil sent us, but he, he doesn't talk direct to us. He used another human being. He used things. He used our own desires. Oh, I love this. So the devil said, I'm going to attend him with this. Why is not direct? Lord Jesus, he has self-control. The, the Bible, the Bible said that the Lord Jesus, he was, he was starving. He was starving. When the Matthew said that he was, he became hungry, the tenter appeared and said to him, the tenter came and said to him, if you are the son of God, command that these sons become bread. The devil is not questioning about his deity. Now, that's not the point. That's not the point. The point is a challenge. It's challenging him. I want evidence. I know that you are the son of God. The devil knows that we are Christians. That we were baptized. But he wants to see evidence. Proof. Like Christian. He's challenging Jesus. Oh, you are the Son of God. Okay. Give me evidence. That's the challenge. And the evidence. He's not asking luxuries. He's not asking about uh, riches. He's not saying become this bread and other luxury things. Just only bread. You are hungry? What do you need right now? Food. It's only food. It's nothing big that I am asking you. To be honest, we are honest. This thing is very good right now. What Satan suggests makes sense. You are hungry? When we are hungry, what do we need when we are hungry? Do we need money? Uh, do we need other things? What do we need? Food. I want food right now because I'm hungry. Just food. Just food, son of God. Sense. Just food. He's saying, uh, Jesus. Why do are you up to start to death? Why? Jesus, you are the Son of God. You have the power, you have the right to satisfy your own needs. Let's make the question right now. Do Jesus have the right to satisfy himself? Do Jesus have, have is right to do his power? He can say, yes. He got the power. He got the right. That's what people said, right? I got the money. I got the money. I got the Why not to buy this one? Why not to get this satisfaction for myself? Why not? But what Jesus said to Satan, 
is standing. Is proving his self control. And we said that it was Satan was asking, become or say, command this song, become bread. And we are saying, oh, he has sense what Satan was, was saying. But let's read. Jesus answered and said, this is the thing. No, it doesn't have sense. Satan, what are you saying? The Lord answered and said to Satan, it is written. If you are thinking that, that what you are saying has sense, it got more sense what is written. It is written, man shall not live on bread alone. This has more sense. People outside is saying, Oh, it got a lot of sense to make an example right now. It got a lot of sense if we are offering every day instead of on Sunday. Probably we're gonna get more money, and with that money, we can support the poor people outside. It makes sense or not? It's for a good purpose. Somebody can say it makes, it makes sense. But what is it, it is reading? It got more sense. Offering according to 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 1 and verse 2. On the first day, or the way. What is reading it got more sense. It is important to respect what is reading before to all desires. It is important to respect what God is saying, is commanding to us. So like we said before, the Lord has the right, he has the power, but he's not obeying his life. Satan, sorry. He responds to Satan, men shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. In other words, Jesus is responding to Satan, my father is able to feed me, to sustain me, to hold me. I'm starving right now, but I'm trusting in the father that he will provide. That's me, submission. Sometimes with, with him, I'm weak, but he's strong. And he is with me. The Lord God is with us. It is not because Jesus, he, he doesn't want to, to eat. Yeah, he was starving. He was very hungry. And, and, and we read in the Bible, in the following verse, in the verse 11, in Matthew chapter 4, verse 11, that after the temptation, the Father sent angels and where ministering Jesus Christ, and he started eating. In other words, Jesus was saying to Satan, this is not the time yet to eat. I'm starving, I'm dying of hunger, but this is not the time yet. Verse 11, God sent the angels with food. That was a miracle. Satan was asking for a miracle. Become his son in bread. That the angels brought food that was also a miracle. Yes or not? Yes. But in God's time. No, in our time. Let's have self-control, brothers and sisters. In our time, we are continuing supporting. We are going to see. We're going to see that God's time, he, he will be providing for us. And that was, Jesus was supporting, and was resisting this temptation. And he had self-control. What he's reading is more important. This temptation was similar 
the same when Jesus was in the cross. Remember, when he was in the cross, the people, the priests, the leaders of Israel, of Jerusalem, they were asking him, if you are the son of God, came down from the cross. It was similar temptation. The devil right here was saying, if you are the son of God. Jesus I, I don't have to show you anything. He is the son of God. Saying right now, people are saying, if God exists, why we don't see God? God is not going to be pleasing people. He is our holy God. He is the highest one. He is the creator. He's commanding us to have self-control. And Jesus is our great example of self-control. Jesus is our great example over the anger. In Proverbs chapter 16, verse 32, the Bible says, Better a patient person than a warrior. One with self-control, that's one who takes a seat. That's exactly right. This is a great example about this one here. He's the Mickey one. Learn, he said in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 to verse 30. Learn from me. That I'm Mickey and humble of heart. He was humble. He was meeting. He's a humble God. He's a humble king. A humble savior. And that's exactly right. If we become angry very quickly, we start cursing, saying about wars, and we, uh, we lose our self-control, we are going to be in trouble. We became blind. We don't see anything. We can solve anything. Jesus, again, is a great example. We conclude our lesson this morning. The Apostle Paul was discussing with the governor, Governor Felix, and they were discussing about righteousness, and about self-control and about the final judgment and when the governor heard about this one he became frightened he said Paul go away he was scared because he didn't practice righteousness he was a Roman governor was a lot of corruption in the empire. What about self-control? He didn't practice the self-control. He didn't, they didn't care about the self-control. And Paul was appointing about those, those important things. Righteousness, you are gonna give a, an account to God. How you are ruling right here the province. If you got self-control in your life, and it's going to come very soon a judgment day. Are we having self-control in our lives, different areas of our lives? Are we ready to face a judgment day? We are not ready. We invite you, we invite you to come to Jesus Christ this morning. Is a great example. We invite you to repent. Come to Jesus. He's a good Savior. He's a good Savior. He's a good Lord. He's a humble King. He's able to save us. To save every single human being. We only need to confess His name, believing in Him, repenting of all sins, and to be baptized for the remission. Thank you so much for your attention. The lesson is yours.